Hey folks, Whip here, and welcome back to the Minecraft 1.16 Amplified World, where last episode, we acquired this book. This book is like none other. It is an amazing book. It's an absolutely perfect book because it is a mending book. This is actually our second one that we have, and as you can see, my tools are a little rough right now. Last time, we decided to put our first mending book on the silk touch axe right over here however let me get a little bit of the junk out of my inventory that should do it for enough space we have three really really dead tools here and i only have two total books one was already on this guy i think we're gonna put the second one on that one but i want to go over to the sugarcane farm and see how much we've been able to generate now if y'all are still enjoying this minecraft survival let's play here please be sure to click that like button down below if you would and if you haven't already please click that subscribe button i usually don't ask for that in the beginning of the videos but i know without doing the full youtuber youtuber thingy of only two 0.7% of you are actually subscribed. There's a weirdly large percentage of people that have been watching that aren't. So just double check that for me, can ya? Coming down here, however, the machine has stopped right now, but I have been running it for quite a few hours and we have got a lot of sugarcane right here. This might be able to get us our, ooh, not very much in this guy though. And a good amount over here too. Okay, that might actually be able to get us enough paper here to get a third mending book because that is quite a lot of paper right there let's head on up to where we have our librarian villagers in the side of the mountain which if you did not catch it for the title video thumbnail all that good stuff for today's episode we're going to be giving them a home today i want to build our first building up in the city i hope it turns out well somebody a few episodes back commented saying hey flip you should take a look at some bioshock infinite fan art and concept art to get a few ideas for your village your city or whatever it is that you're building up on the cliff they're like i think that would fit perfectly with the steampunky theme and oh my gosh were they right i've been looking at that stuff forever and wow has it been cool we're actually gonna have to buy one of these so that we can get some books in order to trade with this guy right over here but that's totally fine and i just gotta wait for this to unlock Ooh, we now have a glass trade too that's gonna be really important yep an extra villager got out at some point and there we have it mending book number three now i just actually have to be able to repair all these things and be able to put the books on them to get started oh this is gonna be interesting i'm gonna leave all the rest of this paper up here for now Soon we will need an actual blacksmith to do this stuff at, but for now, just coming right down here inside is gonna be great. Ooh, only three levels for that guy. And what do we got here? Three levels as well. That is gonna be great. Woohoo! Okay, off to the spider farmer go. Which, come to think of it, I don't know if I have mentioned this to y'all in videos quite yet. So we've got a little bit of a train station right up here where we can get on a minecart and head off this direction going through a tunnel on this really cool railroad that we built up. But this thing is pretty dang awesome. I love how this little railroad system here turned out. Recently, we did set up some bubble elevators and a water drop chute to get ourselves all the way down to where we've actually decorated out this lower area quite a bit. All of the spiders should be spawning over here. We'll see them trickling in here in just a moment. The zombies all come down here because the zombie spawner is right over there and the two spider spawners are here and here. And we turned it into a small little factory warehouse something or another down here. And as you can see, we got lots of spiders. We got the spider kill and sword. And I have got some experience to grind out over here. But for you, my friends, I've got a great time lapse for y'all. So let's go ahead and kick this off in a good old fashioned time lapse mode and do some underwater terraforming. And that right there is going to be close enough for me on the final tool. We'll put the spider slayer back in here and we can head on back. I got both of the pickaxes fully repaired. Figured that was more important. And this guy's like 80, 90% of the way there. So it's all good. Crafted up a bunch of wool off of all of the string that we got too. So we could take that back home with us. And now it's time to get some building going on. But first, we definitely have to stop by the new underwater area where I also had in a little boat with an engine on it. And we've got some fishies around here. All the kelp's grown up now. And, oh, it looks so good in here. I really love this place. Now, I've been doing a little bit of testing in a creative world while I was waiting for the experience to come in. And I've come up with a bit of a design here for what I would like to do 
up above for the library. I'm super excited about this one. I think it's gonna turn out absolutely awesome. I just need to get quite a few different resources together here and I'll meet y'all up top for some building. Since we've already done a time lapse today, I thought it'd be kind of fun to come in here and build the front of this one up here together with y'all. So we're right at this point where we've got a nine wide area right like this in here. And I think it's going to be absolutely awesome. What I thought could be kind of fun is to add a staircase going up. So it looks like you're walking up and making the area much more grand and tall. And this structure right here is going to be a tall one. I'm super stoked for it. And we can start by just filling in some bricks in this area, then bringing in a little bit more of the polished stairs right in there, and then doing some more polished andesite, stepping its way right back into here. This is more or less our entry area that we do have. Now coming back into this point, we can start to really etching these shapes out a little bit better and bringing in a little bit of these polished granite stairs, we can etch in a few places for some windows. I know it's gonna be a bit skinny in here as the wall technically is gonna go back there and the wall on this side is back on this block as well. It's only gonna be seven wide in the middle, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's something that I think we can work with as we're going. So at this point, I wanted to give ourselves some tall windows to again, add some extra height to this structure here. So if we go one, two, three, four, and five coming all the way around. And then using that same topper that we had on the bottom being the polished granite stairs, I think it's gonna look pretty cool. Then inside of here, I've got a bunch of these uh, light gray stained glass panes on me, and we can just throw those guys right in there. Now that's looking pretty cool and all right, but we've got a lot more work to do in here for sure. One point is gonna be just to clear a few things out of the inventory is we can have a door and a door right in there. And then I want to bring in a few dark oak logs and y'all have seen me do this before for some larger doorways, make it feel a bit more grand in here is doing something right like this. And then I actually am wanting to bring in a few of these little dark oak planks right in there and another one of the logs. And that's gonna be our doorway in here, but it feels rather boxy, right? So we can bring in some polished granite stairs right like a so and right like a so and that helps to kind of round things out. Now to give a better idea of it, I will go ahead and fill in the bricks right there. And that is the front facade more or less of what we're working with so far. And I think it's really cool. If we start bringing in a little bit of the granite, say right around here and a little bit of the regular terracotta like we have in those points, we can maybe bring them in, like do some terracotta in here. We can do another granite right in there, just helping adding a lot of age to the building and making it look like it's been here longer. After a while, the brick would start to crumble and maybe some areas get scuffed off by some cars or wagons or carts just kind of hitting next to it. And we can end up with something a bit more along these lines where maybe right over here too, we can even extend this guy out. And this actually helps us save on some bricks too. And I think I wanna bring another layer all the way up here with some bricks as well. Some more height because I wanna add some extra layers onto this thing and it's not all gonna be bricks. So we're gonna need some way to divide this, which brings in our smooth quartz blocks right over here that we have bringing in some of these stairs and then some slabs and then stair, slab, etc., going all the way across here. And to give it an extra little bit of thickness to it and to mob proof it, oh, there's a vine right there. I guess that's where our string went, okay. Ah, uh, but we can bring in the slabs right along here too. And there we go. That's looking a million times better. Now we're going to add a front awning here. Eventually I need to get some polished black stone stuff on me as well as some lanterns to make that one work. And since we don't really have the light in the area quite yet, I'm gonna pick up our bricks and go ahead and sleep real fast. Then we can come back and start working on the next layer. Moving up to the next layer now, uh, take two. <laughs> Moving up, come on, I just need to jump. <laughs> take three, jump. Made it. Okay, moving on to the next layer. You might have seen it already in my inventory. We are going to be bringing in some sandstone as well as a few extra little bits around here with some of these guys because I think it's going to look super cool. So bring in a whole line of the smooth sandstone right here and then we can start bringing in some of this cut sandstone to help give it a bit more shape and form to it. So we have something like this, where instead of having the one wide windows down below, we can now have some two wide windows. Also, sorry for the lag. This right here is literally a chunk border, and it's one of the ones that's broken inside of this world. As mentioned though, we can start bringing in some larger windows and adding in some spruce trap doors, as well as dark oak trap doors. It helps give us a better frame for these guys. Then I want to bring in some of our light gray stained glass right back here, bringing that all the way up to the tippity top and bringing in some polished andesite stairs right like this. I think it's gonna be awesome. You can see the window structure being built in right here. I believe those will be mob proof too, since we have the trap doors kind of occupying that space. 
Now beyond the windows themselves, I wanted to detail this area out slightly because we went very heavy on the texturing down below. So I want to incorporate a bit of sand into this since I think it'll look pretty nice and helps just add some extra texture and weatheredness to this building. As we're on the ocean face right over here, there'd probably be a lot of salt in the air that would be aging the structures up here. So being able to show that in the build is actually really cool getting these stupid vines out of the way because I hate them. We're getting rather close to the ceiling, but I really want to be absolutely up against the edge of it. Now, at this point right here, I thought it'd be fun to mix up the sandstone that we had and adding in a line of the stripped oak log. This is all going to be rather difficult to look at as we're building it up. So you're just going to have to trust me and see the final result as we're going. Then for a little bit of a highlight in some color here, bringing in some warp trap doors because they look really pretty and I like them a lot and they look nice. And for the last point in this little layer here, we're bringing in another line of the smooth sandstone. Then from this point is where we're actually going to be starting off the roof which I think is gonna be super fun to work on. It's gonna be a unique one. It's something that I haven't really tried before and definitely took a few tries over in a testing world to get right. And that's totally okay because it's gonna be able to give us something really cool here. Sorry, string, you gotta go, my friend. Actually, can I just get it like way up there? Yeah, let's do that. Realizing now that I forgot some stone brick walls to be able to build this thing up a little bit further, as well as we need a lot more of this black stony stuff on us. So down we go oh, one more time to the storage room. But first, here's a look at what we have on the second layer so far. I like that a lot. Now, as we're pretty cramped for space in this area, I wanted to focus on making the front of these buildings looking really cool, which is why I haven't even started to touch the sides yet. That's probably just gonna be stone or maybe even like jungle planks or something like that so we can have a bit of siding to ourselves but coming out here to the front that i talked about earlier is i wanted to bring in some of this black stone and then finally some lanterns that little bit of something protruding out of the wall here really helps to bring this area in a lot better we'll mess up this lower area add some life into it of our street and everything like that here soon but for now let's find a way back up to the top of that guy this out you know what i'm gonna bring this with us too now for all this lovely blackstone stuff i keep talking about is we're gonna be creating a bit of a victorian roof to this thing very much inspired by bioshock infinite that i was talking about earlier and we're gonna be bringing in quite a lot of this blackstone right around here and then actually at these points we're gonna start inching it up quite a lot i think i have enough to be able to be pretty sparing with where we're placing this stuff getting the vines out of the way and i think we can bring that up right along here as well using some of these polished blackstone walls here on the corners because I think they'll look a little bit nicer. Then we can start adding in some of the stairs going around like this as well. So this is leaving a three by three area open in the middle for us, which is gonna be very, very important for what we're doing next because I wanna make a large grand window inside of this spot. So adding in a little bit of the blackstone down here at the bottom, bringing in the birch trap doors because they're as close as we have to a white frame for a trap door, which is really important for this. And then from there, we can move back to some of our smooth courts, which is going to be equally important to making this thing work out for us. And then I can jump that. Cool. <laughs> I'm really worried about hitting my head on the ceiling and just falling off. And as always, this whole thing down here is going to be using the light gray stained glass as well to bring it in theme with the rest of the building. I'm loving all the different layers and colors that we're able to mess around with in this place so far. And I've got a bunch of designs in mind for things that we could do moving forwards but man is it going to be a little expensive to start gathering up some of these resources which we will be tackling one here later today but moving forward from this point is i actually wanted to bring a little bit of to a topper onto this using some of these smooth quartz stairs here taking this all the way back into the wall actually right like in there then you can bring those stone blocks back in now this is going to be where it gets a little interesting and we decide how intense we want to go on detailing the sides of these and how much space we want to be clearing above the structure because right now it's all we really have is like two or three blocks as you can see i'm literally working into the ceiling itself now but i think it's gonna be super cool i want to go ahead and jump back down real fast and grab in some iron bars bring those around here and then i'm thinking i don't have them on me right now we actually might be able to use the polish andesite instead but I wanted to create something to fill in this area and making it mob proof just with some sort of a slab block. I was thinking regular and a site could be really cool and probably fit a little bit better. But for now, since we have it on us, we'll go ahead and use those guys. 
Adding in the iron bars going all the way around here will help to mob proof the tops of the stairs and should add a really cool look from down below. And I couldn't help myself. I did bring in a lot of these regular andesite slabs. I wanted to replace the floor up here because after I saw the polished andesite, it looked okay, but I was coming back up here anyways, so I might as well fix it. Taking a step back, there we have our first structure inside of the city as you can tell it's gonna be very crammed in here this whole place is gonna be filled with buildings and i am so excited about it i really love the height on this i've never really built a structure this tall before as i was down in the warehouse i did bring up a few goodies for ourselves to start decorating stuff out a little bit further because i thought it could look kind of nice so the stone cutter obviously can't be down here we have to be very careful with the decoration stuff that we are using inside of the city at this point because well if we're not Villagers are going to have professions everywhere, and they're not going to have the profession that we want them to have. So that's going to be something we have to worry about a little bit as we're building. But for now, we can kind of ignore that one and just be careful not to place anything. So I was thinking a little bit of an entrance into a basement, or at least vision into a basement that we can build later. Could be down there. I was thinking some machinery thing. Hey, look, an activated piston. Steampunky, right? Yeah, uh-huh. It really works out great for us. And what I want to throw in this spot, we've actually got to run over the flower forest to grab. Man, do I love having that nether portal to get over here. It took about a minute instead of the 10 minutes I was taking by boat. But we need one of those lovely dudes. And I want to make sure that we don't take one that has bees inside of it. So I think I have some honeycomb in here. I do. Let's just craft ourselves a new one. As much fun as it might be to have some bees roaming around in the city, I feel like it's not the safest place for them. And this is a really cool detail block that we can use without worrying about any villagers taking it as a job. Because as far as I know, beekeeper villagers don't exist. As much as I might want them to, I don't think they're here. There's a creeper though. Look at that dude. Ah, we're getting out of here. And back up in the city now, well back up with a building facade that might eventually be part of a city but for now it's just a bunch of stuff sitting all over the place that we really got to deal with regardless it looks cool and we can do this right there look at it oh it's so good i don't know what to use for the floor around here quite yet so if you have any ideas on that please be sure to let me know in the comments below we'll deal with the roads and everything in a future episode for now however we are trying to get the librarians up into the city so they can live inside of here we'll have to deal with mob proofing this place very very soon but one thing i wanted to focus on for the next little while was actually clearing this out and now that i'm thinking about it that sounds like something absolutely terrible to do so how about an adventure instead? How about we go on an adventure? Because there's a block that I've been thinking about using inside of this place that I also really just want to have in general. And that is Dark Prismarine. Dark Prismarine is one of my favorite blocks to build with and I think that would fit perfectly with the blackstone roofs and everything, just giving ourselves another darker colored like tiled roof thing going on here. Moving over to our adventure to the Ocean Monument here to get that Dark Prismarine, I thought it'd be pretty important to craft up a few underwater breathing potions. And I believe all we're gonna need for this is a piece of redstone, as well as some nether wart and a puffer fish. I think that is the recipe. We haven't been here for quite a while, so we'll go ahead and throw the nether wart on top. I need to run out to grab some ocean water for ourselves, the best type of potion water, potions of the oceans. There we go, we'll wait for that stuff to all brew down and I think we do the puffer fish and then redstone will make it last longer. I think that's right. And awesome, three eight minute potions of water breathing for ourselves. I don't think we're gonna need invisibility or anything like that. Taking a brief look at our map here, there's no ocean monuments within this region. However, I believe there's one like right up in this area. So we're gonna go ahead and try and find that. So if we go to the point over here of the peninsula and then just go straight north and we are off on an adventure, leaving the city to hopefully bring home many a riches. Here we are at the peninsula, and I think we just need to turn our course ever so slightly and head off in this direction. And is that it right there? Oh my gosh, there it is. Yeah, we can basically see back to the city from here, so that's really good. Now, I do eventually want to create a guardian farm to get more of that lovely, lovely dark prismarine over there, as well as sea lanterns. I think those will be super sweet to be able to use inside of the base, but for now, let's just clear it out. I don't have the time to be able to build an entire farm today, so the plan is going to be run all the way on top. There's going to be a little bit of a jump scare here in a moment from the Elder Guardian flashing across our screen. Just be wary of that thingy. Coming in right over here. We're good. We're good. We're off. He Why is there no Elder Guardian? And swimming down. Swimming down. Get inside quickly. Quickly before we get zapped. 
And we're in. Now that we can move around, we can keep on moving around inside this place, seeing what we can find. There's going to be three Elder Guardians in here. There should be. I don't know why I'm not seeing the debuff quite yet from them, but there should be three Elder Guardians in here somewhere. I'm waiting to use the Underwater Breathing Potion just for a minute here. Hi, buddy. How are we doing? Great to see... Oh my gosh, does the shield not work on this? So the thing inside of here is going to be completely full of gold blocks for ourselves. Check that out. Oh my gosh, we got four or eight more blocks of gold. Okay, now we got some new bubbles for ourselves. How are the Elder Guardians still not getting us? Does this thing not work? Does a shield not work against these guys? Have I been lied to? Oh, there we go. Now we have mining fatigue. There's no pop-up, though. Okay, well, now we got to go find those dudes and kill them. We've got eight minutes, at least, to find one of them. Ooh, but at the front entrance, there was another layer to go straight up. Oh, gosh, there's so many of them. Ooh, sponge room. Oh my gosh, sponge room, sponge room, sponge room. Oh, big value, big value, big find. Now I'm thinking we're making some good progress over here. Gonna break all the line of sight on these dudes. Just swim on down. We should see the elder. There he is. There's the elder guardian for us. Come over here, buddy boy. Oh, yes. Take him out, take him out. Oh, I should have brought some form of food to eat. I've taken a lot of damage. A lot of damage over here. Gonna swim, eat a pork chop underwater. It's fine. We can breathe the water. Going back in for one more hit. Got him, got him, there's a hit, and then gonna line it. Okay, we're doing it like this. We're going professional strategy over here. Just dodging and weaving, dipping, diving, swimming down, swimming all over the place, going around the pillar, breaking all that stuff, and I think we just killed him. Did we get him? No, he's still alive. Oh, this dude lives forever. We're doing a no-hit run over here, even though we've already been hit way too many times. Oh, no, we got hit. Oh, I think we just killed him. I just heard the experience bubbles. Yes, we did. Oh, there's a sponge up there, too. And we got our first sponge. Oh, boy. Now, since we found the big dude off to the side, we can actually just run all the way around here along the back. And there we go, Elder Guardian number two. How you doing, buddy? You're stuck in the corner? All alone? Oh, you're mine. Maybe he, maybe he's gonna kill me, actually. There we go, Elder Guardian number two is down. What else do we got up here? Anything fun? Anything good inside this room? Not much, but we've got to find our way all the way to the top, and this is looking pretty promising right there. And there he is, number three. Oh, we just got trapped in the beginning. I gotta lie, I'm about to die here. That's not good. We don't want to die inside this place, because uh, there'd be all of our potions. And here goes a uh, number three with hopefully, yeah, there we go. And he's down. We've done it. Monument conquered. Oh, well, there it is. That was an easy find. Hello, sponge room. How do we break these again? Is it just a. Uh... I think it's a pickaxe, right? And there we go, 35 sponges for ourselves, and the best part about this room is there's Dark Prince Marine all over the place. Oh my gosh, I just broke into another sponge room. Oh, this is a great ocean monument. Holy cow, how rare is that to have two sponge rooms right next to each other? So you're telling me, I raided an ocean monument to be able to get some Dark Prince Marine, and I'm coming home with 70 sponges? That is a good day. It's hard to constantly be avoiding these guys when I'm taking down the exact walls that I'm using to avoid said monsters. Uh, is this the way out? I really hope this is the way out. Nope, it's the other way. All right, right over here. I think this is going to be a right, and then we can get on out. Yes, 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 yes. Run, 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 run. There's the boat. Ah, oh, there's a guardian in my boat. Oh, gosh, there's so many lasers on me. Holy cow. Hi. Yeah. Diving. I'm, I'm doing a lot of diving. My boat is somewhere over there, floating on the surface as a broken item, and I cannot see it. We're gonna give one more sweep. Oh, there it is, okay, perfect. It's just outside a load and in distance. Well, I guess that's called render distance. And boat, and go, 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 go. We made it out alive. The sun is coming up and we are back at the base now and it is looking fantastic. All I want to do is mess around with this waterfall area that we have and get rid of a lot of that sand that we have going all the way up. I feel like it's just making the city look a little rough. Everything else down here looks absolutely awesome. And then we have that sand. Oh, we'll have to get rid of that here soon. One thing we can do first, though, is I think I need to make a diamond hoe if we don't have one already. We do not, but one thing I did find on a stream a while ago is a trident. We'll get that thing set up here soon. We need the diamond hoe as we can run on into the nether and quickly dry out all of these sponges. And I am quickly met by two gas right on the other side of each other. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That's so kind of you. Okay, there we go. They're both gone. And all we got to do is bring the wet sponges down here, and they will dry themselves out and make a lot of noise. Placing the sponges down makes it feel a lot larger, and there's a lot more of them than I thought there would be. And oh my gosh, this is going to be so nice. What are we going to use these for? I want to make a guardian farm eventually. 
but I don't know quite how we want to do that yet. Do we want to do one where we drain the entire ocean area around the monument and do all that stuff and make it look super cool? Or do we want to go with one where we kind of leave the water inside of the monument? Let me know in the comments below. But there we have it, 70 dried sponges and eight more blocks of gold and a bunch of dark prismarine, prismarine bricks and one regular prismarine apparently. Pretty good adventure, if you ask me. Since we don't have a spot to store these quite yet, I'm gonna just throw all of the prismarine stuff inside of the barrel here in the middle, and I will probably forget where I put it and spend a good while looking for it later on. But check that out, that is two stacks of blocks of gold. We're almost at a beacon worth of it. That's insane. But that's all I got time for in today's episode. Thank you all so very much for watching. Click that like button down below if you did enjoy. I know we didn't get to the interior quite yet of the library, but we'll tackle that one here in the next episode or so, so we can move all of our villagers up into the city after we mob-proof that place a little bit further. Anyways, click that subscribe button if you're brand new, my friends, and I will catch you on the flip side.